Next guest uh, ran Tesla's global sales business, but says software is not yet ready for Tesla's autonomous driving. Joining us now, DVX Ventures CEO John McNeil, as mentioned, serves as, served as an executive at Tesla. He is on the board, we should point out as well, of GM. Uh, not an unimportant competitor there. Uh, John, let's uh, you know, just start off and give me your reviews, given what I've stated, uh, obviously, is your bio and what you're doing now in terms of the, uh, the presentation yesterday. What did you think? Well, I think, you know, the vision of us getting 11 hours back uh, a week is a great vision. Uh, and that's why people have been working on this problem for more than a decade, because Americans spend about 11 hours a week in their car and you would get all that time back. Uh, that's almost a full day. It's a work day plus. Uh, and you get a bunch of safety benefits. I think in terms of the presentation last night, uh, I think the headline for me was, Hardware is easy, software is hard. Uh, it is relatively uh, straightforward to put a prototype vehicle out uh, and show the potential of hardware. But the software and the data gathering is really where the uh, rubber meets the road in, in this challenge. And in this case, you know, Waymo's got 22 million driverless miles. Cruise has 5 million driverless miles. And right now, Tesla is zero. And there's a lot of catch up to do. And I think that the lightness on the detail uh, is obviously not only uh, affecting Tesla stock, but as Phil pointed out, is helping Uber and Lyft, where I think some people were, were potentially shorting that and then covered their shorts this morning uh, because they saw that, uh, that Uber and Lyft weren't going to be under the pressure maybe than uh, that they thought they were. Oh, a full self-driving world. We're at 12.5 right now. They're using generative AI. I mean, you mentioned the driverless miles, but many come back to the data that Tesla does have from all the driver miles, at least that they've been able to monitor for these many years. Yeah, I think the data is is important, both driverless and driven, uh, clearly. Kind of, the, David, the key measure in the business is how many miles the car can go before a human has to take over. Uh, and that's a really uh, the measure of how good the software is. Right now, Waymo and Cruz are thousands of miles in between uh, human intervention, so they can just go. Uh, right now, Tesla is between 12 and 14 miles, and that's with the latest, uh, the latest release of full self-driving and supervi or supervised. So they've got a several orders of magnitude to catch up, and Waymo and Cruise aren't sitting still; they're adding miles every day. So I think this is going to be a really interesting kind of uh, competitive landscape to watch evolve. But uh, but there's a lot of ground for Tesla to make up. That's for sure. To what do you attribute the difference then? Uh, I mean, we know that they have gone different paths in terms of the technology under the underlying self-driving for whether Waymo and Cruise versus Tesla. Um, why are they lagging, at least in your opinion? I think uh, I think it's a couple of things. One is this has been the primary problem that uh, that Cruise and Waymo focus on every day. And so uh, it, when you focus technical teams on one problem, you tend to get uh, really rapid advancement. Uh, and Tesla's got a lot of things it's focused on. Um, and I think uh, I think Waymo, Cruise, and Tesla now are all using end-to-end -end generative AI models, as you uh, as you said. But Cruise and, and Waymo, because they've been in the uh, the driverless uh, uh, space and have been executing driverless miles, also have a bunch of uh, what a lot, what a lot of people call uh, tail use cases. Uh, the rare events that happen, that they've got models to cover. Uh, and a raw end-to-end -end model uh, just with generative AI doesn't, doesn't cover all those tail use cases. Uh, and those are important because the public's really concerned about safety. And so you've got to cover those, uh, those rare use cases. And, uh, and I think that's going to be a challenge uh, for everyone in this space. But uh, that's where the driverless miles come in and are very beneficial to helping uh, these systems understand uh, things they see every every once in a while.